One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Mike, and today we are playing The Wars of Marcus Aurelius from Hollenspiel. I know you hear me say this a lot, but this is another great war game that was recommended by Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire and the Dice Tower. And no disclaimer needed for this one, it's not a review copy. Actually, one of our very generous viewers sent this to me as a loner along with some other war games, and I'm going to play them and send them back. So thank you to our amazing viewers. We say it a lot, but you all are the best. Like always, I'm going to quickly go through the setup of the game and the basics of play. If you want to skip that, just use the timestamps. And if you like what you see here at the One Stop Co-op Shop, join the conversation on our Slack or our Discord. Listen to our weekly podcast every Sunday. And consider supporting us on Patreon for some great perks. So setup for this game is super straightforward, but let's get to it. First, you have a lot of little markers that are going to start on the board. Looking up here at the top, you start with the Imperium marker at the four space, the round all the way on the left in the spring, the year all the way on the left in 170 CE, and then you have your three tribes you're fighting against. The Marcomani go on the plus two space, the Quadi are up here on the plus eight, and you get this little token, Quadi cannot attack on them at the start, and then our last tribe starts on the plus four space. Now getting down to our units and legions, you're going to start with two legions, these ones, in the unactivated legions and leaders box, as well as Pertinax and Maximianus in the box as well. By the way, I forgot to check with Liz about the pronunciation of a lot of these names, so forgive me on my bad Latin. Additionally, out of the 12 legions you start with, two of them start out in recovery, so you won't have them for the first year. And then you get to distribute the other 10 legions and both Marcus Aurelius, your main leader, and Pompeianus uh, in the boxes, but we'll get to that in a moment with the basics of play. Now you've got two card decks in the game, a green deck for the tribes and a red deck for the Romans. And you're going to go through each of them and take out all the cards that say late war. They won't come in until halfway through the game. Then you shuffle each of the decks separately, and that's it. You're ready to play. So before I get into the round and year structure of the game, let me go over the basics of winning and losing. So the Wars of Marcus Aurelius models Marcus's battle against multiple tribes, all attacking in concert and having rebellions and having peace treaties and all this stuff. But the basic idea here is you win the game if at the end of one of the years, all three of the tribes have surrendered at the same time. You lose the game if one of three things happens. First of all, if the Marcomani tribes, and they are slowly walking down these spaces, if they get into Rome and sack the city, you're done. Secondly, if the year marker goes past 179 CE to the end space, you lose immediately. You ran out of time. And finally, the one that always gets me, if the Imperium tracker goes down below one to usurped, then you have been kicked out of your role leading Rome. Uh, you're probably beheaded or something or stabbed in the back. You know how that goes. The basic idea of the gameplay is you're going to draw several barbarian cards each season. They'll often move the barbarian tribes down. And then you'll get to draw some Roman cards that'll let you build forts, fight the barbarian tribes and push them back up. And to make them surrender, you have to get them to their home space and defeat them again. So it's kind of like a give and take, a pull and push, trying to survive and to keep people happy at home with the Imperium track until you can defeat the barbarians. Now to get to the basics of the turn, at the beginning of each of the seasons, spring, summer, and winter, you're going to draw three barbarian cards and resolve them one at a time. Many of them have instant effects like this death in the family one and are then discarded, but a large portion of the deck activates one of the three tribes. When a tribe gets activated, if they're on their demoralized side with the lower value, instead of moving, they just flip to their bold side. But if they're already on their bold side, they move one space down, and if they get to this box, you resolve whatever their negative impact is, and they go back to the space before it, and they could just do it over and over again. Additionally, a key concept is whenever a tribe activates, their card will tell you to put it in one of the surge spaces, and when the third card goes in the surge space, they all get discarded, but basically all three tribes activate. Whichever one was not called out by the card, those other two both get to go as well. So once you've resolved your three cards for the season, then you get to your Roman cards. Now you draw a decreasing number of these cards in each season. You draw five in the spring, three in the summer, and only one in the winter. Then you have the housekeeping phase where your forts might go away and other stuff might happen. And a key concept is you don't have to use all the cards in each season. You can 
carry up to five of them into the next season. And then at the end of winter, you can carry up to one through the meditation space into the next year. So you don't have to play them all. As a general rule, each action card will have an event you can play it for, or you can just discard it for one of the generic actions you can take. And some events will have a star next to them, which means if you use it as the event, it goes into the history pile and never comes back into the game, whereas the rest could get shuffled and used multiple times. At the beginning of each year, you get to assign all of your units. In this case, I've got two leaders and ten legions. Units can be assigned to one of the three boxes matching each of the three tribes. Or if you've drawn a Barbarian card that started an off-map conflict in either the east or the west of the Roman Empire, you can send units there. Now, legions can hang out without leaders, but leaders need to be with a legion. They can't just be by themselves. Now, let's quickly look at the basic actions Romans can take with a card. First of all, an important one you'll be doing a lot, you can place forts with a card. Forts can be level 1 or level 2, and they give you both bonuses in combat in the region they're in, and also can be hit or discarded to cancel barbarian movement from their space. With one action, you can place two level 1 forts, or flip a single level 1 fort to its level 2 side. But the key thing is, forts can only go north of the Danube, so anywhere on this track, only up here where the pluses are on this track, and only up here for the Marco Mani on this track. And additionally, you have to have a chain of forts. You can't have a fort by itself unless there's a fort on the lower space. And similarly, you need to have a chain of level 2 forts. So I couldn't, for example, have a level 1 fort here and then upgrade a level 2 fort up here because the level 2 fort needs to be in the lowest space in that track. And like I mentioned, if a Barbarian tribe tries to move out of a space with a fort, if it's a level 2 fort, you can bring it down to a level 1. If it's a level 1 fort, you can discard it, and that cancels the movement. Another action you can take for one card is to move the Imperium track up one. Basically, you're going home and schmoozing. And I'll note that if you begin a year with the Imperium track all the way up at 7, you actually get 6 cards in the spring instead of 5, which is a nice boost. Another action very important is combat to push the tribes back towards their home because if you beat them in combat at their home, that's how they surrender. You compare the tribe's combat value, which is their current side's strength, plus the terrain modifier for their space, so this would be a 6 here, and you compare that number to the number of legions you have in that particular track, plus the leader's value if you have a leader there. So here I would have 7 to their 6. You roll a d6 for each side, higher total wins, if there's a tie you just roll again. But importantly, each time the Romans roll a 1, they lose 1 point on the Imperium track, and each time they roll a 6, they gain 1, as people are satisfied or dissatisfied with the uh, Roman leadership. Similarly, each time the Barbarians roll a 1, they become demoralized if they aren't already. Each time they roll a 6, they become bold if they aren't already. Another action you can take, although only twice in the entire game, is you can discard one card to place a fleet marker on either the upper or lower Danube. And once you've done that for at least one of them, you can also take an action to discard one card to freely mix and change the legions and leaders within linked boxes. So you can freely change everything like at the beginning of a year if you have both of them down. You can also, for two cards, send legions and leaders out to an off-map conflict, pulling them from anywhere, although you can still only have one leader. Also, quick note, if you start with armies in either off-map conflict, you have to discard one card at the start of the spring phase, so you're going to have fewer resources as you deal with all the stuff over here. Finally, during the housekeeping phase, you have to roll for all your forts on the board, and if you get a six, they either go from a level two to a level one, or get taken away entirely. And that can chain up, like if you lose your bottom fort, then you can't have forts on all the spaces above it. And additionally, for each card you have in an off-map conflict that you haven't dealt with yet, you lose one Imperium point, and that could take you straight to being usurped. Alright, so with that being said, let's get into the playthrough and my initial placement. The Quadi are all the way back on their track, which does theoretically make them vulnerable to a quick strike, although we can't attack them until they've advanced at least once. But the other two tribes are definitely close and dangerous, especially the Marcomani could start costing me Imperium points right away. So I think I'm actually going to totally abandon the uh, Quadi track and have six Allegians, the max I can have, and Marcus here to try to just destroy the Marcomani, and then uh, four here and my one leader to try to deal with the other tribe. And you might notice me consistently not saying their tribe's name because I don't know how it's pronounced and I don't want to sound dumb. Actually, you know what? Let's uh, reverse that. Let's put our big army against them. 
uh, try to just knock them out since they're a little closer to home. And hopefully Pompeianus can deal with the Marcomanni if they get too close. All right, we get into our first spring round. Normally the Barbarians would get three cards here, but just the first year you skip that and go right to the Romans' five cards. So I've got a generic action card. I've got Marco Mania. The event there will place some free level two forts, which is saving me quite a few actions, only on the Marco Mania and Quadi fronts. Divine and Conquer lets me change which Barbarian group is activated. Eh. Barbarian Informants lets me look and reorganize the Barbarian deck, but they're going to come anyway. And then Order Retreats for when I lose a battle. So the only one I really think I want to play is Marco Mania here. So let's play that for it. So let's play that for its event. It doesn't have a star, so it just goes in the regular discard pile. And I think I'll just put a level 2 fort there and a level 2 fort there. Uh, that can prevent them from moving twice, so my army doesn't have to fight them, hopefully. And the quality, if they ever do activate, will uh, have a little bit of trouble there. Now, I could stop there and hang on to the rest of my cards, but I do want to get some forts down here so that uh, this tribe doesn't get some free moves. I can discard them to cancel it. So let's use my generic action card to build two level one forts. I have to start at the bottom, but I'll chain them up. I need to do one more action to stop them from getting a free move. And that is really important to do because fighting is a crapshoot, but having a fort there and stopping them from moving is way better than letting them move and then fighting to push them back. But at the same time, I don't want to put some forts that might just go away during housekeeping. So for now, I think I'll stop there and save three cards. All right, so we go into the summer. Now we will do three barbarian cards. And they have these spots for them up here, and I like to fill those with the three cards so I don't forget how many I've played as I have surges and other events. But you still reveal and resolve one at a time. Okay, so first, unrest in Rome. Discard one card from your hand or the meditation holding space if you do not lose two Imperium points. All right, let's get rid of Barbarian Informants to prevent that because two points is ridiculous. Plague. Well, the Barbarians aren't doing much. So I lose one Imperium point. And then I roll a d6. If I get a 1, I have to take 2 legions and put them in the reserves. If I get anything else, I just take 1. Okay, not a 6. Nice. So my Imperium points tick down to 3. And I'll take a legion from here, because I want Marcus to have as much power as possible to push them back. All of these recovering tribes will come back at the beginning of next year, by the way, so I'll be to my full strength of 12. Ah, uh, there we go. So the Marco Mani are going to activate. So in this case, I'm not going to let them advance. I'll just flip my level 2 fort to a level 1, and that's it for them. But since this was a regular tribe activation, it goes to the surge space, building toward that free movement for the other tribes. All right, we survived the Barbarians in spring. Let's see what we can do. We only get three cards now. All right, we got probably the best combat card in the game, Tactical Advantage. Uh, after you see the dice results, you can flip one of the two dice to its opposite face. So you can change like a 1 you were about to get to a 6 and gain an Imperium point instead of losing 1 and win the combat. A generic action card and a nice one, although it goes to the history. It has a star, so it's only one time use. This one lets me get a card from the discard pile, which heck, I could see me doing with tactical advantage if I need it. All right, so I'm going to push these guys if I can. Let's do a generic action card. And I might as well build some forts since it gives me plus 1 in combat. So they've got 4 plus 4 is 8. I've got 3 plus 6 legions, 9 plus the fort, 10. So I've got a 2-point advantage. So let's discard uh, Ordered Retreat to attack. Our roll, 5. Awesome, we can't possibly lose. Hopefully they'll roll 1, though, and get demoralized. Nope. So uh, they get pushed back one space. And lucky me, I've got a fort there waiting for them in case I want to attack again or just prevent them from moving forward. And let's see, right now it is a tie. They are 4 plus 6 is 10. I still have my same 9, plus 1 is 10. But if I win this, I can pretty much guarantee a victory with a tactical advantage and just take out a tribe right in the first year. That seems too good to not try for. So I'll discard, I'll divide, and conquer. Okay, here we go. Tie game. My roll. Awesome. Tactical advantage might get used. Oh, and they rolled a 2. So, yeah, let's uh, change that to a 6 for me. So I'll gain an Imperium point instead of losing one. Uh, they go to their home space, but they would now be uh, three points above me with their 12, me only having nine. And I only have one card left to attack with. Now, uh, I mean, I could see if I get lucky and they don't move. And then if they don't, I can use Philosophical Inquiry to get the tactical advantage back. But yeah, it seems likely that they'll just advance and I'll have to fight them again next year. So let's hang on to this and see how things fall out. So we're going into the winter, still three cards for them, but I'll only get one card. And I'm minus one for battles, which uh, could again impact if I do anything here. Oh no, we got one of our off-map conflicts. 
So this one goes on the western map. It's got a strength of four, and again, it's going to cost me one Imperium point every dang year at the end of the year until I deal with it. Oh, and speaking of Imperium points, another plague is costing me one Imperium point, and I lose another Legion. So I'm down to three, and we'll pull from them again, since hopefully the Marco Mani won't do much. And finally, ah, the Quadi. Their card is more complicated, but all it says basically is that if they have surrendered, they'll make one of the other tribes move. Whereas, like, if the Marco Mani had surrendered, they would just waste that card, except for it going to the Surge space. But hey, we can attack them, and they move up to the Seven space. But these guys haven't moved. Hmm, let's see what our uh, one card for the winter is. Oh, and it's a really good one. This gets me an extra Legion for the rest of the game, which is pretty huge. So let's see, what are my chances here if I use Philosophical Inquiry to get the Tactical Advantage back and then use that to fight? I would normally be 9, but minus 1 for winter is 8, and they'll be 12, so I'll be down by 4. So if I roll even kind of bad and they roll pretty decent, Tactical uh, Advantage can only flip one of the dice and I might just still lose. So you know what? Never mind. I'm going to get the extra Legion for the rest of the game. That goes to the History pile because it is a one-time use. And I'll put this one into Meditation for next year. Just hope uh, these guys don't move and I can uh, hit them in the spring. And so I get my new Legion. And we go into Housekeeping. The big thing is seeing if my forts stick around. I always start with the lowermost one because if I get a bad six here, all the rest will go away anyway. So we're over here. And there we go. So every fort is gone. Yuck. Over here, a six would just flip it to a level one. No, and over here, no. Okay, so the only one that happened is the one that I care the most about. And then because I do have an off-the-map conflict going on, I'm down to two. Oh my gosh, I might have to spend some cards just to boost that up soon. All right, we're going back to the spring one year later. But before we see the Barbarians three cards, we get to reorganize. I get all four of my legions that were in recovery, and I have my new legion. Still feel pretty safe about the quaddy, so let's see, we could just... Get a bunch of these guys, I guess. Although we probably want to deal with this. To do it even somewhat safely, I'd probably need to commit quite a lot. But that would leave the Marco Mani free to just kind of rush through. Unless I get lucky and they don't move much. I only have one fort there to stop them. <laughs> what the hey, let's go all the way with it and really try to win that one. Okay, let's see what doom we have in store because I definitely have to deal with three cards this time. Ah, the worst possible, I guess. That means the tribe I've been hitting activates, but since there's a surge, I discard all of these and the other two tribes activate too. The Marcomani I prevent with the fort. The Quadi haven't reached my fort yet. Okay, uh, the Marcomani uh, advance into my territory proper, and then they advance again. So they are literally one space from conquering Rome, and I have uh, two legions to stop them. All right, so I get my Philosophical Inquiry. I get five more cards, but I do have to discard one immediately for my off-map conflict. And let's look at these more closely. So Galen can stop a plague effect a little late for that. Publius Helvius Pertinax gets me a new leader, as well as both Danube markers, but it costs one Imperium point. Battle on the Ice lets me crush somebody during the winter round in a battle. And then this card lets me reorganize my army, which with the Marcomani where they are, I think it needs to happen. So let's discard the Plague card to uh, pay for the off-map conflict. Even though it hurts, let's pay one Imperium point to put this new leader down. And that's a once per game card, so he goes out. We'll put him with my weak little army here. And again, I get both Danube markers as part of that. And I guess I should play this to transfer people. I hate to do this. But yeah, let's get the big boy back in charge of things. I'm going to use uh, Battle on the Ice to discard it for a regular combat here. I've got nine, they've got four, and hey, if I roll a one here, I lose. But I didn't. Hey, I gained an Imperium point. Thank God for that. Okay, and they just get pushed back. But they're still south of the Danube River, which means I can't build a fort to stop their movement. I'll lose an Imperium point if they're still there at the end of the turn. So what the hey, I'll use this for our entreaty, which would have been amazing to stop uh, that Chadi card without even fighting. And uh, I'll fight them again. So it's still 9 versus 4. I get a 4. They get a 5. Not enough. They are past the river. And I'll just see all my hopes and dreams dash by playing my last card. Putting a fort there to slow them down. And let's go ahead and slow down the uh, Quadi as well. Well, that was painful, but we're going into the summer. Okay, first, uh, Marcus Aurelius' wife, Faustina, has a scandal. Lose one Imperium point. We're down to one again. Yikes. And then, oh, quiet on the Danube. Do not draw any more cards this round. So this one we can just put back on top. Thank you for the reprieve. All right, we only get three cards now. And they are uninteresting. Wow. <laughs> three action cards. All right, let's do one over here to take care of this battle. 
I've got six, they've got four. I get a three, they get a two. So this is gone and it is history, totally out of the game. But these six guys go to recovery, so I can't use them until uh, the end of this year because they're traveling back to Rome. As for my other two cards, let's uh, battle the Marco Mani again and then maybe build a fort. It's easier now than later. Oh, wait, crap, no, let's, uh, let's push the Imperium Tracker up one. And then, yes, let's battle because it's going to be tougher uh, if I wait until the winter. So now they got a plus two, nine versus six. I get a three, that's 12. They get a two, they are pushed back. All right, going into the winter, let's see what they do. Okay, all my forward progress is gone with these guys, and hey, that triggers a surge. So we'll trash this fort to stop them, and they are right back there. Second, the quaddy try to move again. So hey, they finally reached my fort. And third, oh good lord. So all of the troops with Marcus become mutinous and will not do anything until I pay an IP, which I barely have, and a card to uh, get them their money. So boom. There we go, guys. I'll definitely have to take care of that in the spring. Going to housekeeping. Let's roll for our forts. No and no. Good. And our off-map conflict is over. Thank God, because we're so close to the bottom. Boy, oh boy, that was an ugly year. Let's hope the spring goes better. All right, I still think focusing on the Marco Mani is going to be okay. The Quadi still have a pretty powerful fort there, but let's see. Maybe we can divide up a little bit. Well, no, I'd rather be able to, like, consistently fight. So let's leave the Quadi pretty much unopposed and just have uh, two big legions, I think. All right, three Barbarian cards for a third year spring. Quadi, almost surging again. And I can flip that. Balamar. Okay, flip the Marcomani to bold. They already are. Immediately attack them. So I have to discard one card. Uh, I can't attack. They would have plus two combat value. Now the thing is I don't have any cards to attack. So it says if you can't attack, you lose, but do not discard this card to history. But my losing automatically means that one of Marcus's troops goes to the recovery space automatically. And our last one. Quaddy again, jeez. So that's a surge. I'll prevent them. I'll prevent them. But these guys just prance on forward. Okay, I'll get my five cards. Okay, auction in the form of the deified Trahan. Uh, plus two Imperium points. I think I have to play that. Harsh winter. No barbarian cards are drawn this game round. I might just have to play that at the beginning of uh, the summer so that I survive. Single combat lets me turn a tough fight into a D6, D6 kind of thing. And if I win, I get a free amazing leader. Hmm. I usually prefer that when I have a mitigation card in my hand, but I might just try for it. I reshuffle the Roman deck, not gonna do that. Oh, and choose any two barbarian armies and demoralize them. That is amazing. All right, so let's definitely play the auction card and put it to history to get my Imperium points in check. They're back to four where they started, uh, progress. And now let's pay one Imperium point and a card. I guess I'll do the Goddess Fortuna one. And that'll let me get my dang army back. Now I've got all of these. If I use Harsh Winter and nobody moves, I might be able to just like slam the Marco Mani back and maybe take them out. Let's try it. So I'm not gonna play anything else. So we'll play Harsh Winter. It doesn't say I have to play it in the winter, so I'm assuming it's fine. So we skip the entire Barbarian round for the summer, and I just get them three more cards. I got Winter Quarters. Make up to two attacks during one winter round, and do not suffer the usual minus one on those attacks. That's nice. A Commodus can end a mutiny. That would have been good a second ago. Or plus two IP, but I think I'm okay for that now. I mean, you know, I think I'm actually not going to do a lot. I think I might just play Action Card and Commodus to build some new forts. Bide my time and try to do better next year. So let's get one, two, three. And what the hey, let's get a fourth one to prevent them moving in a second. I'll keep the rest for now. Okay, my three cards. Ah, uh, Alexander the Quack Prophet. Marcus just lost us an Imperium point. We're back down to two. And then, ooh, quiet on the Danube. Okay. So I'll put my third card back. I get a fourth card for the winter. Just a basic action card. Let's see, maybe I'm crazy, but I could... <laughs> Could use my double winter attack thing to try to push the Marco Mani back to the plus six space. Could even demoralize them first to make that more likely to succeed. Sure, I like the idea. So let's use Reputation of Rome. I'll demoralize them and the Quadi because these guys have two forts to stop them. And I'll play Winter Quarters to get two possible attacks. Uh, their two plus two is four, and I am eight with five Legions and Marcus. I get a six, awesome, one Imperium point. They get a two, so they go back. And then going again, so uh, this time they're a six, and I don't have the fourth, so I'm just the eight. I get up to a 10, 
and they get up to a 10 as well. So we re-roll the tie. I get a 10 again. They get a 10 again. Okay, I get a 12 and they get a third or no, an 11. So they are pushed back. And I'm taking a bit chance of bad rolls during housekeeping, but I think I'll use my action card and they'll build up to where they left off. If I get lucky, then that'll stop them from moving and hopefully I can uh, push them for the finish. And I'll save my single combat just on the off chance that it can work in my favor, maybe at the uh, home space. All right, here we go, housekeeping. I'm gonna roll for the plus two space, of course. No, plus four, no, plus six. Awesome, kept all of them. Over here, good. And the bottom one on the right, got it. Got it, no sixes, fantastic. All right, we're going to 173. When we get to 175, we'll add the late war cards in. Going into the spring, first I can reorder, and I think stuff looks okay besides that. All right, come on, praying for nothing too terrible from the barbarians. Okay, the Marcomani are no longer demoralized. That's a bad start. Oh no, now the barbarians siege my forts. I have to roll for each one, and if I roll below what the terrain bonus is, so like if I don't roll a six here, the fort goes away. Although I don't take away the ones that are kind of out of supply until the end of the year. Okay, so I need a six. Nope. Need a four or higher. Yes. And a two or higher. Yes. Over here, two or higher. Yes. Three or higher. No. And finally, a two or higher. Yes. And our last card, Barbarian Siege Forts again? What? They just really don't like those forts. Okay, four or higher, no. Two or higher, yes. Two or higher, yes. Two or higher, yes. All right, well, losing one fort for an entire barbarian card, I can deal with that. So I've got my single combat left over. A generic action card. Let's see, the guy who prevents plague again. Local guides reduces the terrain bonus by half. That would be nice if I can get the Markamani in their home space. Ooh, the rain miracle I can use before a die roll to automatically win a battle. And this one lets me build a bunch of forts on my right track. I'm thinking I can do a rain miracle on the Markomani and then local guides to give me the advantage in the final battle. Though that would be four cards, two to attack and then two to uh, play the bonuses. But let's do it. All right, so an action card to battle him. I'll use the Rain Miracle. It gets taken away. I gain one IP automatically. I can't use it in the home space where I'd use it for the tougher battle. And then I'll ditch Galen. Fight with local guides. So I have nine and they have four plus four, eight. I have a one point advantage. Come on, dice. Romans, a two, that's not good. Ooh, <laughs> so they would be demoralized from the one, but it doesn't matter. I have made them surrender. And I didn't talk about this in the how to play, but once a tribe has surrendered, you uh, roll for them to break their oaths. Every time you have a surge, you get three barbarian cards played. And you roll a d6 and have to exceed the total of the combat strength there. So if you have at least six, I have nine here right now, then they can't possibly betray their oaths. And level two forts add one to that. That's what the plus one pacify means. So if I can get some level two forts there, I can move some of my uh, soldiers away. So hey, that was pretty awesome. Super happy about that. Got my fort building card and my single combat, but I think I can wait until the summer to play those. So let's see what these guys have in store. Bad omens. I get to roll to demoralize a army. Hopefully not the Quadi who are already demoralized or the Marco Mani. So hoping for a five or six here or it won't matter. Yes. Awesome. So everyone is demoralized or surrendered. Okay, then Goddess Fortuna. I shuffle all the barbarian cards back in and then I discard this, but hey, it's a free card basically. You know, I'm realizing my third card should be in there technically too, so I'll shuffle that and then draw a random third card. Okay, my final card. Are you serious? Flip all barbarian to their bold side. Well, there goes that. So they are back. But hey, I'm coming back too with a new lease now that I defeated one tribe. Well, I got a temporary truce. That might be a good one to save for next year. That basically means uh, some barbarians can't move that entire turn. Forced March. I could go to a off-map conflict for a single card. And an ambush, a nice boost for a combat. Let's see, I'm thinking I want to save the temporary truce. I prefer to play this card after those guys moved up one, but I could also just attack them. Yeah, you know what, let's try that. So one option is to place a level one fort and flip a fort to level two. And these are still seven strengths. Should I spend a card to bring Marcus over? So right now they're four plus three, seven. I have six legions and a weak leader, so eight with the fort, so only a small advantage. You know, let's fight them without bringing Marcus over and ambush them and really try to slow them down so we can hit them hard next turn. So Force March and then Ambush. Force March was just to start the combat. So they're seven and I'm eight, but I get plus three. So I'm 11 and they're seven. I have a plus four advantage. I get a five, so they're definitely done. And they get a three and they go back and they're demoralized because of the Ambush. 
And I think I'll save my last two cards since single combat can be used uh, even in the winter without any penalty. Speaking of the winner, here we go. Ah, Faustina brings us back down to four IP. Ah, Barbarians are sieging my forts again. Luckily, they're in pretty safe spaces. Okay, Marco Mani, fine. Quadi, fine. And the plus three one, gone. Plus two one, fine. And then the Quadi advance, I have to get rid of my fort. And I'm one away from a surge and an Oathbreaker check. And I get my final bonus card, just a regular action card. All right, I think just building forts is the way to go here, although of course I might lose them. So let's use one action card and flip this to level two so I can safely take a legion away from it, hopefully. Now let's discard single combat. I want to save the truce for the quaddy, I think. That'll let me build a level one fort there and I guess there. Okay, saving my truce. Rolling and housekeeping. Nope. Over here, no. Uh, the one underneath, of course. So that means this one gets lost automatically. All right, we're one year from the late war starting. Now, before I forget, let me reorganize. So with me still having a level two fort, I only need a five strength here to make sure they can't retreat. So that means I can put a three legions and a level one leader here and have Marcus ready to slam uh, those guys if he can. All right, let's see what our spring cards have in store. Marco Mani, they don't move, but it is the third surge, so that triggers everyone else. So the quadi, I'll destroy the fort. And these guys just flip to their full powered side again. And I would roll for an Oathbreaker check for the Marco Mani, but since I've got one, two, three, four, five, six strength, it doesn't matter what they roll. Okay, second card. Oh, of course the Quadi are gonna come in, you jerks. Third card, the Marco Mani just goes to the Surge, but they don't move. So there's a bummer about my temporary truce plan. They need to not be south of the Danube River for it to work. So I need to fight them once to get them back, I guess. Let's see what my five cards do to help. All right, nothing too great here. Our Return of the Captives lets me get armies back from recovery, but I don't have any. War Atrocities is probably the best one I can play. I roll a d6, and if I get a 2 to 6, I get to demoralize an army. This one lets me cancel a Barbarian card I just drew. That's not bad. Oh, and I don't draw any more cards for the round. Hmm, I am getting a plan. Yeah, you know what? With that, I don't think I'm going to play anything. Oh, that's right, i got to play at least one thing, because I can't take five cards with me into the next uh, season. I could fight the Quadi, but I'm at a one-point disadvantage. I think I gotta go for it. Okay, so action card. Come on, Rome. Ooh, that's what I like to see. That is plus one Imperium point to five. And yes, get out of here. Awesome, and let's not even wait to uh, play that card. Let's go ahead and call a temporary truce on them now. So there we go. Uh, they won't move anymore, although their cards will still go to Surge. And actually, because it's them, they'll pass their activations on to these guys but I have some plans for them. We'll see how it goes. And I'm taking four cards into the summer, baby. Okay, three Barbarian cards. Oh, you're kidding me. So I can cancel any Barbarian card I just drew, except for an off the map one. This goes to the Eastern Empire. Five points, gonna steal Imperium points every turn. That's okay, I still got this for the second card. Okay, that would be the Marco Mani activating. And it'll be a Surge, which means that just these guys would go forward. Huh, you know, maybe I don't want to use this yet. Maybe I want to save it for the winter round. You know, I'm not going to use this. So that's a Surge. I don't have to activate the uh, Marco Mani. These guys are under truce, so these guys will just move up one. The Quadi, oh no, but they do pass it along, so ah, they're all the way down here. My plans of killing them in one go are kind of dashed now. But hey, the nice thing is I can just skip the entire winter phase, and I have a bunch of cards to fight with. Let's get three more. Right, I've got a card to get my last missing leader, although I don't think I need him since I have three leaders. Ooh, Route is amazing, especially for what I'm planning. I can push an army back twice when I defeat them. Oh my gosh, Vincenzi Initiative lets me make two attacks on a single front. Yes, this is definitely working in my favor to hopefully smash these guys. All right, here we go. Let's see how things work out. War Atrocity is going to try to flip them. Just need to not roll a one. And there we go. So they are demoralized. Now let's go ahead and seize the initiative and attack them twice. So they're four and I'm nine for the first one. So I'm up to 11, they're up to eight, they get pushed back. Second combat from that same card. Uh, three and nine is 12, they're at five, plus three is eight, they are there. Okay, I'm gonna fight them again with the leader card I don't wanna use. Uh, they're six and I'm still nine. Oh, awesome, I get to 15, that puts me to six Imperium points. I'm only one away from a bonus card, although the uh, off-map conflict will stop that. They get a one, I mean, they're already demoralized. I'm going to play Route to have them go twice. Get to your home. 
All right, so they're still a 10, even though they're demoralized, and I'm only a 9 because I don't have any forts there. But I can boost a plus 1 with a card. Let's go for it. Come on, 6. My card? Oof. And I roll an Imperium point, and they... <laughs> they are not demoralized anymore. Okay. I have to uh, send one of my legions to recovery. I don't think they're. Uh, I don't think they're stopping for this round. Yeah, fought them again. Now they would have twelve, and I would have only eight. So uh, let's hold off. All right, we'll keep the rest of our cards. Go to the winner. I can still cancel all three of their cards if I want to. And yes, this would be a double move by those guys. Forget that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these two back. And I'll play this card. I cancel the card I just drew, and don't draw any more cards. So done for the winner. Well, not done. I need a card. I got to reshuffle. Oh, man, I got an ambush. Still not enough, right? I've got eight. They've got 12. And I'm minus one for the winner, so that'd be seven. Even with plus three, I'd still be under two. Yeah. Okay. But I can, uh, I can put ambush as my saved card for next turn. So let's use these other two to, I guess, build forts. All right, so I clearly need a fort here, and I guess we'll put one there. And then let's flip this to a level two in case I do defeat them. All right, housekeeping, the truce is over. We're going for this fort, fine. The quaddy fort, got a five, that's fine. Our first fort here, fine. And the top one, come on. <laughs> well, I kept my number two, I guess that's the more important thing. And we are going into 175, which means we take all the late war cards and shuffle them into the decks along with all the discards for each deck. Although not putting cards that are in the history back. Oh, and I shouldn't forget, because there's a war on the Eastern Front, I lose an IP automatically. And before we draw our Barbarian cards, I get a Legion back, and I can move people around. For now, I kind of like how things are. All right, so we're in the spring. Oh, Balamar. Hmm. So the Marcomani get an Oathbreaker check with plus one, which means if they roll a six, even with all my guys there, they will come back to life. No. Let's see. It seems to only go to history if a fight happens. So I think it just gets discarded, but nothing happened. I'm happy about that. No! British Uprising, this is the Western one. If it had been another Eastern one, it just wouldn't happen. But now we've got two of these. That is minus two Imperium points a turn. I didn't send anybody over. I wanted to ignore it, but uh, yikes. I hope I get that card that automatically resolves one. And now you can be quiet on the Danube. I could have avoided <laughs> drawing all of those. Darn it. Ooh, but on the positive side, I get five cards to maybe finish these guys off. They didn't move. Let's see, I got War Atrocities again. I could bring them down to 10 strength and me having nine. Could do seize the initiative to attack twice. I don't know if that would help if I just got butchered the first attack. Winter quarters, two attacks during... Oh, I forgot! I still have an ambush saved. If I do war atrocities, then attack with ambush, they would have 10 and I would have 12? Okay, okay. Yes, let's do this. So, hate to do it, but war atrocities again. I just need to not get a one. And I did, which means all barbarians are bold. But I don't care, I don't care. I'm still attacking with an ambush, so I have plus three. Which means I'm 12 and they're 12. Tie game. We can make this happen. Come on, Marcus. Greatest leader ever. Or <laughs> another Imperium point down. Oh, Lord. Okay. Wow. So I lose a Legion to recovery. Oh. Oh, it's painful. And now my Imperium points are down to three, which means uh, with both of my uprisings, they would be down to one with how things currently stand. Oh man, what do I do? What do I do? I guess I wait for more cards with uh, three hanging on. I can't lie, and I gotta say, I'm the one feeling demoralized now. Oh, good omens. All the barbarians are bold. That's okay. Marco Mani, they don't do anything, but that is the second of my surges. Oh no, Plague worsens. Lose one Imperium point, roll d6. If I roll a one, uh, one Legion goes to recovery and I lose a region permanently. There's a late War Plague card uh, where I just put one in recovery. So let's see how that goes. I'm all right. I'll pull a Legion from the Quadi, I guess. But yeah, my Imperium points are desperate right now. I'm losing two. I have almost no way to deal with those uprisings unless I, I don't know, I guess I could spend two cards to run over there and then try to fight them. Well, yeah, I can get three more cards. Ooh, Harsh Winter, skip all Barbarian cards. That'll be good. Local Guides, oh, reduce the terrain value by half. Maybe I have another chance to defeat those guys. And then Route, hmm. Oh, you know what I totally forgot? I'm supposed to get one Imperium point when I make a Tribe Surrender. So let's give myself that to make things not so desperate. And actually, now that I remembered that, uh, yeah, let's go for it again. Okay, so I'm gonna attack them. I'll use Local Guides, have them be plus four. 
So it is eight to eight. Another tie battle. Come on. Marcus gets a five. Ooh. Yeah, get out of here. Okay, back up to four. All right, now let's see. With that, I'm thinking... Maybe I do discard two cards and try to go take care of one of those off-map conflicts. Or gosh, do I need to? Because, huh. I can spend those same two cards and just get my Imperium points up. No, you know, never mind that. I'm thinking instead maybe I move some guys over and attack the Quadi and route them way back. And then harsh winter them into skipping their turn. Let's see, we are about to have a surge that would trigger an Oathbreaker check. So I don't think I can just, like, empty out my places unless I really want to take a chance. Let's get rid of winter quarters. Actually, no, I'm thinking, why take a chance? Why take a chance? Why not just build up for this round and then uh, set myself up to attack next time? So I'm actually thinking I might want to keep Harsh Winter in my meditation box. So let's do Seize the Initiative and make this Quaddy Ford into a level 2 so they can't get past me too easily. And I think I'll keep the other three for now. So we're going into the winter. I'm not going to use Harsh Winter, I think. Yeah, let's see what happens. Okay, so these guys are defeated, but it does trigger a surge, so these guys will attack. And I have enough troops in both areas so that they can't uh, rebel against me. Okay, second card just goes to surge. Third card, oh, Faustina gets me down to three IP. So that means, again, I'm in super dangerous territory uh, with both of those off-map conflicts. But that's okay, I'm going to keep Harsh Winter. I'll discard both of those to get IP up to five and just cancel the lost. Oh no, you know, I think I'll get it to four, and I'll make this a level two fort. So, saving harsh winner. Okay, let's roll for my three forts. No, no, yes, awesome. I do lose two IP from the Empire falling down around me. So going in 176, I'm going to set up for a hard push against the Quadi. Unfortunately, I can't completely protect against a revolt from both of the factions who are around, so we'll just hope we get lucky if the Marco Mani try to revolt. Well, you know what, let's make it these guys instead, since uh, they have that one card that gives them a boost. And the question is, do I use the Harsh Winter now, or at the beginning of the next turn? I think I use it going into Summer. So let's just try to survive these three cards. All right, come on, come on, come on. Ooh, I'm so glad I didn't use Harsh Winter. Quiet on the Danube. So no more Barbarian cards, which means I'm going to have, like, two free rounds of craziness. All right, this is happening, this is happening. My five spring cards, please give me something good for combat. Single combat, might work. Ooh, lightning miracle, yes, yes. Action card, fine, action card. And good, demoralize, okay. This is gonna happen. Gonna win this round, maybe. All right, so I can demoralize them with reputation of Rome. Lightning miracle can let me win a battle automatically, even in their home space. I seem to have a fort there. Although maybe I just want to do Fort for one action and then Lightning Miracle them into the plus eight space. It's only a one point difference, but it'll save me a whole card of uh, building forts. Well, I have six cards and I can only bring five into the next season. So let's go ahead and demoralize them. I know I'm doing that. And then we'll save the rest going into the summer. We'll use Harsh Winter so we don't have to draw any cards for them. We just get three more cards for us. Come on, something good. Action card, Commodus. Plus two IP. I'll probably use that. And then I can use Maximus to do my fight and get plus four instead of plus three for Marcus. I might do that. Okay, so let's definitely play an action card to go bam and bam. I'll play an action card to fight them the first time. So I've got nine plus two, 11. They've got five. I get a three. They get a six. Ah, oh, crud, they're back to powered strength. Okay, so never mind. I'm gonna save Lightning Miracle for the tougher one, I guess. So here they're a nine and I'm a 10. So we'll go for a regular battle. Come on, come on. Ooh, I got a six. That's awesome. That gives me one IP, which means I'm out of death range from my off the map conflicts. They get a five. Wait, what was my value? Nine, 10. Okay, so I, I beat them. They go back. All right, so now I could try single combat. <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. Let's do it. <laughs> so it's just a straight up 1d6. Uh, if I win, they're demoralized, and I get that leader for free. If they win... Oh, I have to lose two IP if they lose, if they win? Okay, okay. We can do this. Rome! Five! So good, so good, come on! Yes! God, you can be demoralized anyway, but get out of here! Okay, so we get our final leader. Not that it matters, because he's going to recover. There's nowhere to put him. They retreat. Okay, wait, so I do need a fort there. Oh, I'm running out of cards. I clearly don't need Maximus, so let's discard him. 
And we'll build a fort there, and then it doesn't really matter. I guess I'll put one, I don't know, over here. And then, no, oh, no, it's before the dice. Okay, so I gotta use Commodus and the Lightning Miracle, but I automatically win. Um, I gain one IP. This goes in history. I gain another IP for taking them out. So as long as nothing insane happens from the uh, three winner cards, I am done. Markamani, that's fine, although I am about to trigger a Surge. I need one more card. Okay, Quadi. So I need to roll for a Surge. Everyone is safe except right here. Don't roll a six. Don't roll a six. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So the Surge is done. Reshuffle the Barbarian deck. Who cares? And actually, it looks like the victory defeat check happened before housekeeping, so I don't think the minus two would have even mattered, but either way, I'm totally fine. So man, after that one bad round, I did not expect it, but I pulled it off. Actually, one in 176. So let's see, my score out of 10. I have four year spaces left, including end. I have five IPs, so that's a nine. And then I have one barbarian card in the history pile. That's plus one, so that's 10. You divide by two, so that's a five out of a possible 10. Hey, I'm super happy with that. Didn't expect to show you a win, but there you go, The Wars of Marcus Aurelius. If you want to check out my review, what I think of this solo war game, click on the link that just popped up. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.